So what we're going to be going through is ozone ear encephalation. I want to go through some of the components that we actually need for this. But what we see most common use for ear ozone encephalation is going to be things like ear infections, sinus issues. Uh, we actually have some pediatric physicians that utilize this for pink eye with phenomenal results. What we're gonna be talking about in this video is ozone therapy, but I wanna make a disclaimer first and foremost that this is not an FDA approved therapy. Um, you always wanna speak with your physician first before starting any new therapies. And these treatments and these modalities and therapies are not here to treat, cure, or prevent any sort of disease. The information that we're providing today is for educational purposes only. So getting to the main components, as always, we have our ozone generator, we have our oxygen tank, our regulator, that is all hooked up and ready to go. So if we put that to the side, what do we really need for this? We have, again, the water bubbler is gonna be utilized and we use the water bubbler in ear encephalation. You're probably wondering why water bubbling? What does that have to do with this? It actually works in two main components. Number one, the humidification, as the water is being bubbled, there is obviously a little bit of that humidity that, that moisture that actually helps to bind the ozone into the ear canal more effectively. So you're gonna get more efficacious results. The second reason is that ozone can actually be a little bit irritating. Even adults have actually complained that just the dry ear encephalation can actually kind of have a burning sensation in the ear. So this lessens that effect. So these are the main components. We have our, our generator, our tank, regulator hooked up. We have our bubbler system, and then we have our awesome ear encephalation unit. Now, I really wanna to touch base on this because the old units were like a stethoscope. It went right in there. That of itself actually created a little bit of suction and irritation. These are unlike anything you've probably ever seen before. When we discuss some of the other processes that we utilize, we have a destruct. The cool thing about this and very unique thing about this is that the carbon filter is actually inside the actual ear padding. So you have the silicone outside, so it'll actually hold together, but you have your carbon destruct inside. So now one of the complaints that we used to have was that they could smell the ozone. Now you may smell a little bit of ozone when you're doing this, so just make sure that you're in a well ventilated area, you have a fan on, but you're really not going to get much of that because when this goes on, it's going to suction around the ears and then that excess ozone, I'll try to uh, not talk too loud, um, but that excess ozone is actually gonna be captured in here. And again, that excess ozone when going through a carbon filter is actually gonna turn back into oxygen. So it's again, a closed system directly around the ear. When we're talking about ear ozone encephalation, many of you are probably gonna be asking what protocols should you be using? Which is a great question. Just make sure that you check the link below because all the protocols, uh, how often you do it, the frequency, all of that is actually listed down below. So just check that out and you're gonna get that information. But right now we're just talking about what we need to set up. This is a really cool process. I love this. I use this for my kids, just for their ear infections, sinus issues on a regular basis. And this has actually helped to, to mitigate it and really almost get rid of a lot of the, the ear aches, uh, chronic ear infections, and some of the, the sinus stuff that we deal with on a regular basis. Um, allergies is a big one as well. If I didn't mention that before, having allergy issues, this is really, really big. So what we have to have, again, all of our components are set up. We have our stem on our towel. Again, we don't wanna break that. So first and foremost, we're actually gonna stick the stem back in there. Our stem is down, our center stem coming out. You can see we have our hydrophobic filter that's right there. That is also just a key point to know that that is the tube that's actually gonna go into the ozone output right here. So we are going to screw that in. This part is set up. Now, if you recall before, a lot of times we have to have the destruct with the water bubbling system. Here, we're not putting a separate destruct in because our ear encephalation pads actually have the carbon filter built into them. So what we do is we look at the end of the tube. You can actually see in the tubing that there's a single tube that actually breaks up into two different tubes. So it's gonna actually address both ears. You take the end of that tube and you wanna connect it directly on. So again, ozone is going to be coming through here. It's going to bubble within the system. You will then have your earpieces on and we are ready to go. So getting started, we want to make sure that our oxygen is on. We're going to actually set this at seven. So we have our setting for the regulator set at seven. We're going to turn that on. 
Now that it's set aside, then you can actually see that now just oxygen is coming through because I have not turned the generator on yet. Once I turn this on, that current is going through. Now we actually have ozone coming through. It's coming into the tube, down through the water, coming in, and now directly into my ears. The time and the frequency, again, you can check the protocols that are in the link below. So you wanna make sure that you check that out. Like any other treatment, I'm actually gonna leave these on because I'm getting a little treatment myself, uh, can range uh, depending on the individual. Um, sometimes we start very low. I've had patients that have gone for just one minute, um, but typically we're gonna go one to four minutes with this specific treatment. Uh, you can build up as you do it more often. I'm not just sitting here listening to awesome beats. These are actually my ear encephalation ozone application devices. This thing is amazing. Um, one thing that I really want to talk to you about though is just kind of uh, in a sense a cautionary tale and I can actually share this specifically because um, my own wife I dealt with this. She had chronic Lyme disease. We were doing some ear encephalation because she had some brain fog which was a great uh, way to utilize this specific treatment. Now what we did is we actually started a very low concentration and we only did it for one minute, but she ended up having a Herx reaction. A Herxheimer reaction is a, a die-off reaction that can actually happen utilizing, utilizing ozone um, and other modalities too. But one of the things that I realized right then and there was that even at a low concentration, it was too much. So what you really want to be cautious with with this is looking at the protocols in the link below, you can see where most people will start. I always recommend to start low, but if you've never done this before, you could have some underlying infections within your ear um, that are deep inner ear infections that you don't even know about. And so you could be starting with that and you could have some discharge. You could have some excessive irritation that lasts for even more than a day. What you wanna do if something like that happens, no matter how high you've gone or where you're at, you always wanna cut back. In fact, you wanna to wait to even do it again until that irritation, that discharge, whatever symptom that has actually come up has completely dissipated. And then when you do, start back very, very low and ease your way back in. If you were doing something every single day, I would cut back to doing it maybe every other day. Um, it's okay even if you're doing something, if basic recommendations state doing it every day or three times a week, start off with one time a week. You don't have to go fast with this. Any type of new modality that you're implementing, I always recommend start low, start slow, and ease your way in. Irritation, discharge, if that does happen, make sure that you stop, let that relieve itself, increase your vitamin C, get some multivitamins, and you get yourself healing at a good state so that you can actually start slow again. Make sure that this port is not building up pressure inside of your ear. If it's building up pressure, just make sure you loosen it up, move it around a little bit so that that's not directly in the ear. Once you're done with your treatment um, with the ear encephalation key, and always note this, please always remember this, whenever you're done with a treatment, the first thing that you wanna do after everything is turned off is actually remove your tubing from the ozone output. Again, especially with the water bubbler, you do not want to have any backflow. Also with the oil bubbler, which we'll discuss later. Mm -hmm. 